I like this content creator, Jenny. She really gives it, gives it to us real on what it's like to be indoctrinated into a religion and follow the path as laid out by her rule books and still wind up homeless, um, in a bad marriage, you know, trying to pick up the pieces. I really like that. I am very anti-religious for many reasons, and I'm applying it across the boards because a lot of the times this indoctrination hits women and children the hardest because women women are the ones that are left to pick up the pieces and take the children, and women are the ones that are born and raised and indoctrinated to be self-sacrificing. So on the other end of things, when if a woman ends up divorced or her man leaves her or whatever, she is scrambling to pick up the pieces. And then you have people that are like, you should have chose better. Now, how do you vet now for the person that you married in 15 years, in 19 years in this woman's case? This woman had a man that divorced her after 19 years. How do you vet somebody right now? And like she keeps saying, she was raised Mormon. So she is raised to get married as early as possible and have as many kids as possible. So what do you know as a teenager or someone in your early 20s to ask questions of a man that is going to protect you in the future? So this person is in Jenny's comment section saying, I think the double standard here is that you want to blame the Mormon church for not working. But isn't that what the Mormon teaching is? And I'm using this example, but it, it, you could replace any religion that solely sit, seeks to indoctrinate girls to be self-serving and self-sacrificing. So I'm just using this as Mormon because that's what she's speaking on. But there are a lot of religions that teach women to be self-sacrificing and that your only purpose in life is to be a wife and a mom. Um, this person continues with, if we apply that lens, you also had an option to reject what the church was about at any time. But people who are born and raised in this type of religion really don't have choices because everybody around them in their whole world believes the same thing. These people, these religious cults are self-sustaining and homogeneous. So that is the reason why we have to keep talking as content creators, as women that want to keep women and girls from going down this path. We have got to keep talking because so many people like her were raised from the very beginning and only saw other women and girls being indoctrinated that this is your sole purpose. So it's not that she could reject it or anybody or any girl or woman that are born and raised into this type of culture. They don't have the option to just reject it. Reject for what? What if they don't have any life experience or see any other examples? That is the reason why social media is so powerful because we have other women that are coming on here and saying, no, this is, you know, how you end up on the trad wife to single mom pipeline. So Childhood indoctrination should be illegal and jailable. I was born and raised in the Mormon church, and I was also born to a mother who had been born and raised in the Mormon church, who was raised by a mother who had been part of the Mormon church for most of her life. And that makes a difference. Being indoctrinated by converts is a little bit different than being indoctrinated by somebody who is deeply indoctrinated themselves. And here's what that looked like in my formative years. Like I can remember being three, four, five, seven, nine years old and being told facts that are actually facts, like how many planets there are in the solar system, how many stars are on the American flag, how many days there are in a week, and what the boiling point of water is, while also being simultaneously told facts like I had lived in heaven in my past life called the pre-existence with heavenly father and heavenly mother where there was a great council and all of the spirit children of our heavenly parents came together and voted for Jesus to be the savior of mankind because Adam and Eve ate the fruit and everyone was going to fall. So water boils at 212 degrees and if I don't get baptized and obey all of the commandments and get married in the temple and live a pure righteous life, then I will burn in hell for all of eternity. Children who haven't yet developed critical thinking skills, who are being taught 
everything have absolutely no way to differentiate between fact and fiction, especially when everything is presented to them as fact. Santa Claus is fact, and seven days a week is fact, and Jesus is fact. And because of that inability to differentiate real fact and faith and just outright fiction, children who are raised and indoctrinated in faith systems typically don't question. It's as much a fact for them as the 212 degrees and the seven days in a week, which to be honest is one of the reasons why religious people put so much effort into indoctrinating their children because they know, they know. So because I was deeply indoctrinated in a cult, not only did I not have choices, but I just didn't know that there were choices. The fact was I had an eternal destiny that I needed to live out. That eternal destiny meant getting married as young as I could and having babies as soon as I could and being a stay-at-home mom so that I could promote the next generation of eternal companionships and build my celestial family. And all of this just seems like it should be illegal. Which brings me back to where I started. So then Jenny is responding to this um, person saying, I think being a mom is way more important than a career, but my husband and I worked different shifts until she was in school. Then we both worked days. People can say that because they are literally indoctrinated. They are indoctrinated that women and girls sole purpose is to be a wife and mom. Yes, we have to have the added job these days, but it is literally from the time that we are small. But I'm glad, like I said, that people like this are speaking about. There's this little phrase that I've seen in the comments on my videos about being an ex trad wife that just stumps me. And no hate at all in this commenter. She sounds like she's really doing things right, like her and her partner have equal responsibility for the children in their home. But this phrase is I'd rather be a mom than have a career, or it's more important important to be a mom than work or motherhood is the most important job there is and I wonder I just wonder why we don't have a mirror image of this phrase in the male vernacular we don't say this about men it's more important to be a dad than to go to work all day a man's children are more important than his shop or his office or his law firm or his medical practice and we don't say he's a bad dad because he's at the shop or the office or the law firm. And so what this does is it holds back both men and women. It has negative consequences for males and females. For women, this keeps us trapped in kitchens and nurseries. This mindset is, is an invisible prison that women can only operate and be successful and be loving if they do this. Raise babies, cook the food, do the laundry, decorate the house, get ready with me. But it's harmful to men too because the patriarchy and having women in the home primarily rather than men means that men are missing out on their children's lives. It means that in the American post-World War II nuclear family, men are exploited and objectified as the providers and we all have in our minds that that's their job and that's okay. And collectively, we have probably robbed the dads of America of billions of hours and days and months and years of time with their children. And we're all okay with it because dads are gonna be dads. Real men need to work as many hours as they can a week to build the biggest houses and have the best cars and all of the nicest stuff. And real women are gonna be in the kitchen cooking the food. Good moms work and good dads take off work and spend time with their kids. Okay, so then this woman, she stitched one of Jenny's videos and she came in and she came in hard and started this conversation. She says, these older trad wives are trying to tell y'all that this trad wife to single mom pipeline in your forties is happening. The, the women are speaking and we have got to keep speaking so that a lot of this social media content gets out there and it might help some other young woman that is traveling down this exact same path. We have got to at least, at the very least, make it so that women know and understand that there is another way of being other than being an incubator and a servant and a bang maid. We have got to at least 
let women and girls know that that is not your sole purpose in life. That yes, you can be a wife and mom and have some um, balance, have some life outside of that um, situation. That tribe wife to single mom in your 40s pipeline, yes, that's being exposed. All down my For You page, we got these women that are 40, maybe 50 years old, talking about how they were the perfect trad wife. They baked bread, they cleaned the house, they had unmedicated births, they stayed home and reared the kids, and their man still left them for somebody that was 15 years younger than them. Literally. And that's the thing. I think that's why people don't like um, Nara Smith, one, the Mormon thing, and then also because she's romanticizing the idea of being a trad wife. When in actuality, no amount of self-sacrifice and no amount of people pleasing and man pleasing is going to prevent somebody that seeks to mistreat you from mistreating you. That's how that happens. I mean, that that's just what it is. You can never be perfect enough for someone that seeks to hurt you. Okay, y'all. It's really sad watching these women like basically say, I'm a single mom of four kids now. He lives with another woman, blah, 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 blah. And I saw somebody in the comments that said something so perfect. You never see a 40 year old trad wife advocating to become a trad wife. A lot of the times it's typically somebody that is young and very new in the lifestyle. Y'all, if you're in your 20s, even if you're in your 30s, listen to these women, okay? They are what your future could look like. Now, the comments were going in this woman's post. Chemical Bride says, the problem is women are rushing into being a trad wife without properly vetting the man or having securities like a prenup. Now, the reason why I'm pulling this out is because I've already said this. How do you vet a man right now for what he is going to do in 10 years? And when your reality and what you are indoctrinated with in your religious culture it doesn't speak about a prenup and you're in a homogeneous bubble. You don't, you might not even know what a prenup is. The facts that you know, the facts, and I'm putting that in quotes, that you know as what your, um, your religious order has taught you. You don't know anything about a prenup. And what are you going to, how are you going to vet somebody when you are in your late teens up until you're 40. How do you ask enough questions in your late teens to properly vet into the future? How do you do that? Lots of ex-trad wives were in this woman's comment section. Jenga says, me, a trad wife in my 20s, single mom in my 40s. Um, Gone Girl says, was a trad wife for 20 years, 20 years. And ex-husband left for the new office girl. I'm now homeless. He took it all. Someone asked the question, how did he take it all? And then Vote Blue, no matter who, says, wait until you find out the legal system doesn't protect women. We are going to keep talking about this. I don't care if I sound redundant at all, but women and girls have got to understand we have to protect ourselves because if, if the man has more money, and he will, because you would have been at home and self-sacrificing for decades, he has the money and the legal prowess to be able to strip you of everything. Gone Girl responded with, Judge granted me half the house in alimony for life. Ex-husband still refuses to pay, and he managed to evict me with a three-day notice. This is brutal. I'm effing homeless. This woman says, I was a trad wife in my 20s. Now I'm back in college in my 40s. Second Harvest said, quit college at 20 to raise kids and serve my church. Divorced at 48, college degree at 54, you can do this. So stop sacrificing yourself. Put yourself first in your 20s. Stop giving your 20s to these men. Just stop it. Nicole says, my uncle left his trad wife after 25 years and five kids for another woman. Um, Aquarius said, my dad left my mom at 60 for someone younger. She always thought she was better than her single sisters and friends. Stop making these men the center of your universe because they could easily pluck themselves out and walk away. This woman says, I worked at a fancy private school and it was very common for dads to come back 20 years later with a new family to enroll. And this person below her says, they never thought about the past and why so many of the 1950s housewives fought to work. They really need to pick up a book. 
yes, they really do need to pick up a book, but if if nobody ever plants the seed that there is something different or something to explore, they're not going to be looking for a book. And these religious orders hate feminism so badly because it it triggers something in a woman's brain that she can be something more than a wife and mom. And I'm going to end it there. You guys jump in the comments. Let me know what you think. Don't forget to like, comment, and share.